Hey, this is Daniel Norton. I'm here in my studio in New York City with Emily. And today we're going to uh, talk a little bit about what size modifier we want to use for various things. I get a lot of questions about shooting full length because on these videos, just because it's oftentimes easier to guys to show you the lighting, the way it looks on the body, how the shape of it, I usually get in close to make portraits, but people will say, hey, what if I was doing full length? The main difference there is you want to make sure you choose the right modifier and how it's going to like look on the, the body, coverage, such. So we'll talk about that a bit today. Uh, I'm going to start off though with this softbox. This is a 2 by 3 softbox from Profoto. If you only had to have one modifier, this is usually the one I recommend for people. It's really versatile, um, but not my, not my first pick for full length shots. But we'll start with uh, a close shot, which is, I think is what it's ideal for. Um, I am using the Profoto remote on top of my camera, but I'm going to turn it off for a second. I want to set myself up so that my first frame that I make is completely black, right? Perfect. So I'm at 250 at f8, 100 ISO. That means none of the light in the space is affecting my shot because we're here in a daylight studio. I want to get rid of that light. I'm going to turn this on. I am in TTL. I'm in the uh, kind of standard metering here. And because my light is on this side of her, I want to make sure that I'm focusing on this side because the meter will pick up that that's my, what's important. So that's not terrible. It's a little bit hot, uh, as sometimes is the case when you have a lot of space in, in TTL. I want to maybe bring it down a smidge. I could either, I could switch to spot metering, which might help a little bit. Let's just try that. So now I'm on spot metering. Good. Let's see if that helps a bit. Yeah, a little bit, right? A little bit. It's still a tiny bit hot for my taste, so I'm going to go into the camera. Now remember with Profoto, if you want to make an adjustment when you only have one light, you need to use the in-camera compensation. So I'm going to go in the camera and turn the light down a bit. My other option would be to switch to the manual mode now and adjust that way. The reason why I'm not going to is because I'm going to be moving the light around a bunch. So, All right, that's pretty good. You know, it's a, there's detail there. It's not blown out. Uh, kind of looks the way a soft box looks on the face. We're not going to work out this lighting scenario because this is not what I'm here for, but this is a kind of a basic uh, soft box look. Look towards the light a little bit more. You know, we can definitely get, you know, we can get a few different looks like this. Really nice. But now if I went to go full length, right, I'm using the 2470, so I'll go to zoom on to, to 35. I mean, the light's in the shot right now, but don't worry about that. We can see that when I do that, there's tremendous fall off, right? She's lit up here, but not so much down here. We can see that the bottom of the dress is not lit. It's definitely underexposed. Obviously, her feet and legs are completely dark. That's because the softbox is not giving us enough coverage, right? So the simplest solution, if this is the only thing you had, would be to move the softbox, right? So if I take my softbox and I back it up, the further away I make my light, the more coverage it will have, right? So I can bring it back here. Now I will point out that as I'm moving these lights around, the background is going to change. It's going to become brighter or darker, and the reason for that is the relative distance between this light and Emily and this light in the background. I did another video on that. I'll put the link in, in the description there. So if you guys want to watch that video to see that technical part of it. But for now, this should do it, right? We're going to get enough coverage. And she's a little bit more, she's a tiny bit underexposed now. Again, remember I'm in TTL. So I'm going to adjust my exposure back. And now she's lit, right? We can see she's lit head to foot, but if we look at the light, it's much more uh, hard than when we have the light nice and close, right? You see the difference there? So you can do it, right? But the light is not quite as pretty, right? You do get more coverage. The real solution here is going to be to make our light source larger. That way we can still keep it close and still have it wrap around. For full length stuff, I like to use a big light source so people can move around. I prefer to use my scrim gym. It's pretty simple. Um, a softbox this big would be much more expensive than a scrim gym, so um, it gives me that option. Uh, I'm just gonna take my softbox off, toss it over here. It's soft so it won't break anything. And I'm going to move this light in, this light source, I should say, in closer. Now, because this is a six-foot scrim gym, I basically have coverage. I can put it almost right next to her if I want. Now, it is generally a good idea to 
have your light source kind of start from above, you know, at least a little bit. So I could put the scrimgeon flat on the ground and, uh, you know, put it right next to her because she's, you know, probably barely over six feet tall with those boots on. Um, so it would cover her, but the problem is then my light would become too much from the side and I want to create like a little bit of a raise. So I lifted it a bit. Um, so I'm not going to put it right next to her, but I will get it in pretty close. And then the trick here is going to be to get my light, turn on the modeling light, because I want the light, you can see it on the ground probably, I want the light to, none of the raw light to hit her. You, you can see the raw light on the ground there. I don't want any of that to hit her. Now you might be wondering if I'm going to get a shadow on her from this, and the answer is no. By the time that shadow hits, um, hits the scrim, it spreads out, and you're not going to see any of that. So again, we're in TTL, um, so we could find ourselves with an odd exposure here, uh, but we'll give it a shot. See where we're at. Ah, look at that, the light creeped by and created a cool shadow on the background wall. I did that on purpose. Um, so yeah, you gotta be a little careful about that, but if we look, it's a little underexposed, but look at how nice and soft the light is on her. Let's actually give it a little bit more juice. At this point, since I'm not gonna move my light around anymore, I'm gonna actually switch to manual, because it's a little bit easier to tweak the light. And now we've got nice, soft, even light across her. If we don't want that shadow on the background, I just have to move the light, obviously, to make sure that none of it's creeping past. I can actually see that shadow. So it's just a matter of moving it like that. All right, that should be pretty good. I'll leave the modeling light on for a second. This is why they make modeling lights. Just in case you were wondering, Emily. Now, another thing, I can still see the edge of it, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Um, another thing to be wary of is I'm below her, so I want to make sure her chin doesn't go up too much. So when you're shooting full length like this, you generally want the camera to be around their waist height so they seem normal, um, but you don't want them to necessarily look up. So keep your chin not necessarily down, but not too far up. And we'll get nice, even light across her like that, right? We have nice pretty light going across her body. And this could be anything. I'm just throwing it against the wall in my studio because I'm just trying to keep it simple. Um, but if you had a lit background, you could like throw a roll of paper back there. And again, it's still just one light, right? It's one light, large source, close. Ideally, you want your light source as close as possible to your model. The closer the light source is, the softer it will be. So what we want is big light source that's the size of the model, ideally close to her, that will give us the biggest, softest light for full length. So you can find Emily on uh, social media. We'll put the links in below so you guys can follow her there. Follow me here on YouTube. Follow me on Facebook, Daniel Norton Photographer. Be sure to subscribe to Adorama TV, and I'll see you next time on set.